Good morning and welcome to Unity of Chattanooga. I'm Lynn Chartier, your meetup coordinator, and I extend a very warm welcome to all of you here, maybe for the first time, from our meetup group. Whether you're new today or one of our regulars, we're so grateful you've joined us this morning. Know that you are appreciated, valued, and accepted just as you are at Unity of Chattanooga. Today, we are blessed to have the talented musicians, Unity of the Oaks, who will perform a song they've written especially for us, entitled, Oh Yes, I Feel the Spirit. And now, presenting Unity of the Oaks. Good morning, Unity of Chattanooga. We're so happy to be with you today. Yes. from Thousand Oaks, California. We love your music and thanks for joining us, honoring us. And uh, they, I want you to know that they created that song just for us, Unity of Chattanooga. And we can always feel your energy and enthusiasm in your music. And oh, what a great way to start out our Sunday service. I'm Reverend Faye Ann Schmidt and I'm the Associate Minister here at Unity of Chattanooga. And we love it when you're here for the first time. So if it is your first time, greetings and thanks for joining us. Uh, we're happy that you're with us today. And I want to give a big shout out to the folks that are here every week that are committed to this message, Unity Message. Thank you. Thank you. The Unity Movement was started out as a prayer uh, ministry. Uh, Myrtle Fillmore, in her living room, began to pray, and the neighbors joined her, and the family joined her, and slowly, slowly, they began to gather in the evening at her house, her and Charles' uh, living room, and things, good things, started happening. Healing started happening. Uh, people started to prosper. Oh, so wonderful. So let's join together in prayer. And we give thanks for this day. We give thanks 
for the spring, the season, the flowers, the new little babies out there being born and running around, and the joy at the, the shades of the greens of the leaves on the trees, how different they are and how beautiful they make that magical walk or look at the mountains. Such a beautiful thing. And the nature, we see God in the nature. We see the miracle of things working together. The air and the trees, the leaves, the little animals nesting in the trees, and the water that trickles in the ponds and the lakes and the river streams, how it all works together. It's this, it's this magical thing that God's created. And we are so blessed to be a part of it, to see it, to see the interaction, and to see the awe of it. It's an absolutely awe, awesome, awesome thing to behold and to know that God put it together. Somehow, in the wisdom and intelligence of it all. And we are blessed to be able to see it. Enjoy this spring. Enjoy this spring like I've never enjoyed spring before. Because I can see God more fully in everything and in everyone. For this I am grateful. And so it is. Amen. Thank you, God. It's an amazing thing, isn't it? Just to see the wonder of nature. Oh. We have invited Reverend Teresa Lee to be our guest speaker. And you're in for a treat. She is dynamic. She is inspiring, she is funny, she is full of life, captivating, and she is authentic. She is a senior minister at Unity of Hilton Head, and she is an ordained Unity minister who, who uh, graduated in 2006. She is also a consultant and educator in the Unity movement working with churches and boards of trustees, using the appreciative inquiry, emotional, spiritual intelligence, as well as other leadership development tools. And her mission in life is to love out loud. And I can tell you, she does. She is full of love and she just spreads it around. And she is also known for saying it like it is. Her talk is, Now What? Before she speaks, before Reverend Teresa Lee speaks, we're going to go to Unity of the Oaks, and they are going to sing a song titled, Unwritten. You're going to enjoy this. Spoken. Live your life with arms wide open 
Good morning, Unity of Chattanooga. It's Reverend Therese Lee, and I'm so grateful to be back with you all. Today is Sunday, and it is the 11th of April. And I'm grateful that I am here with you all. And oh, let's take a moment as we get centered into our space. And today we're going to talk about the parable of the sower. The stories that Jesus told, we know that they're probably a little bit more historically accurate if, in fact, they're in the Gospel of Mark to start with, because that, of course, was the first Gospel. And this story also is in Matthew and Luke. So it's Mark 4, Matthew 13, and Luke 8. How are you planting seeds so that your life will grow into what it is you want it to be. <sighs> it's April. The sun is out a lot more. Yes, we know that April showers bring May flowers, and we're grateful for that. In unity, I think you'll agree with me that we know that Jesus is one of the many way showers in the world. Yes. And I'm talking about him today because last week was Easter. And the whole story of Easter that I know um, Reverend Doug spoke about was how are you going to live? Live like Jesus lived his life. Focusing on the fact that he died. Mm, we all are going to die. So let's focus, as Unity says, on how it is that Jesus lived his life. Well, the parable says this. Jesus began to teach them many things, but he said to them, listen, listen. And the sower went out to sow. Some fell, some of the seeds fell on hardened ground, some fell on rocky ground. Some of the seeds fell among the thorns. 
and others fell on good soil. Let anyone with ears listen. So this is a story about getting settled enough to understand where it is we're planting our seeds through our thoughts. So the sower of the seeds is you and is me. And how we live our life depends on how we sow our thoughts. Our third unity principle is thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. And unity is practical. How will we live today based on how everything has happened up until now? You might be saying, well, you know, Reverend Therese, I've never really thought about my thoughts being seeds. Well, I'm asking you maybe to shift the consciousness today and think of it that way and know that you are a mighty gardener. Look at my plants. This is COVID results of, hey, hi, because I live alone and I am solo distance. I talk to my plants and they are loving it. Seeds grow, we know this, right, once they're planted. And they have various stages of growth, don't they? So everybody breathe with me. The story is about building a strong consciousness of truth. One that we spiritually develop by opening our minds, being receptive, drawing forth our strength from within in faith, trust, and knowing. Knowing. Four different kinds of soil that the sower was sowing the seeds in. Now, four is a very metaphysical foundational number. And in this story, it represents the four different kinds of soil, the four different kinds of way we hear in the world, and the four stages of development, morally and spiritually, for each of us. So I know this won't surprise you, but the soil represents our consciousness, right? Of course it does. And each of us has a little bit of a different kind of consciousness, just like outside there's many different kinds of soil. So it's not about us all being alike. It's about us all understanding that we have more in common than we have in differences. So the story goes like this. The, hard, the first soil was hard packed, right, on the pathway, which means no roots could get in. So the, so the seeds just kind of laid on top of the soil. And then the birds came and ate them and things like that. And what this represents for us, for you and me metaphysically, is the totally unreceptiveness in our mind to truth, right? We're not aware all the time, are we? because we're not staying conscious and in this present moment to what it is that's being taught us. Everybody is a teacher or a student in each moment. Isn't that exciting? So I'm learning from you, you learn from me. Hey, it's a win-win. So are, is your mind, is your consciousness the soil that's packed? that you hold fast to what might be false into that hard packed soil? Or are you going to move into the second type of soil that's kind of on rocky ground? We've kind of experienced that this past year, haven't we, in COVID. The kind that the story tells about is that we hear the truth and we're happy about it. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited, yes? And then what happens is kind of like a beginner's luck of manifestations and wow, this true stuff is really great. However, then life happens, doesn't it? Always. And if we haven't taken the seeds in, right? If we haven't taken the application of truth up into our consciousness, then when this shift of life happens, 
we wobble, don't we? Well, we can wobble. And pressure becomes too much for us sometimes if you allow it, right? So unity and truth are not always the easiest paths, and yet they work. And I know that because I'm in my 50, 30, excuse me, 35th year of practicing unity principles. That means we move from the mental level to the heart level, and we are taking it in and we're living from it. So that when a struggle comes up, an opportunity, a challenge, right? We don't give up. We say, hmm, maybe that this person who's bugging me has something to show me. Maybe the doctor's diagnosis is just that, because God is my prognosis, always and in always, right? And whatever little financial things are happening, well, wait a minute, where's my source? With God, of course, of course. And then it's us doing the work to make sure it all happens. And what about that one last person that gets on your nerve, the last nerve that you have? right? Well, forget about it. Say, oh, I'm experiencing a rocky moment. Everybody breathe with me because it happens. Rocks happen, don't they? The third type of soil is the soil where there's some thorns in the bushes on the ground. We have those in our life, don't we? So we hear the word and then we use it selfishly for us to get all that we can do. Remember back in the day where the one with the most toys wins? Yeah, that doesn't really work, does it? Because we can only take with us, when we move into a greater dimension, that which is in our consciousness, right? So I tell all of my folks at Unity of Hilton Head, who most of whom are in retirement, hey, spend your money. Spend your money while you're here on you. So what we know is that having wealth is not a bad thing, and yet it does not get us what it is that we need in consciousness and truth. The seeds of selfishness choke out the seeds of truth and generosity. I always say when I drop stuff off at a thrift store or one of the other non-for-profits, uh, when they ask, hey, do you, would you like a receipt? I say, oh no, I'm trying to outgive God. And they laugh and it gives them something to think about. So as we know, we, as we give, we receive. We give and we receive. And as we do this, then it allows us to move into the fourth type of soil which is the good ground, so to speak, right? The one that's receptive, who hears the word of truth and allows it to sink in, that generates a root system, so to speak, right? So that we can, in fact, say my favorite saying, here I grow again, here I grow again. Say that with me. Here I grow again. Are you willing? Are you willing to open your mind and your heart and your ears and your eyes to be receptive to the growing that happens? Good morning, Unity of Chattanooga. It's Reverend Therese Lee, and I'm so grateful to be back with you all. Today is Sunday and it is the 11th of April. And I'm grateful that I am here with you all. And oh, let's take a moment as we get centered into our space. And today we're going to talk about the parable of the sower. The stories that Jesus told, we know that they're probably a little bit more historically accurate. If in fact they're in the Gospel of Mark to start with, because that, of course, was the first gospel. And this story also is in Matthew and Luke. So it's Mark 4, Matthew 13, and Luke 8. How are you 
planting seeds so that your life will grow into what it is you want it to be. Oh, it's April. The sun is out a lot more. Yes, we know that April showers bring May flowers and we're grateful for that. In unity, I think you'll agree with me that we know that Jesus is one of the many way showers in the world. Yes. And I'm talking about him today because last week was Easter. And the whole story of Easter that I know um, Reverend Doug spoke about was how are you going to live? Live like Jesus lived his life. Focusing on the fact that he died, mm, we all are going to die. So let's focus, as Unity says, on how it is that Jesus lived his life. Well, the parable says this. Jesus began to teach them many things, but he said to them, listen, listen. And the sower went out to sow. Some fell, some of the seeds fell on hardened ground. Some fell on rocky ground. Some of the seeds fell among the thorns and others fell on good soil. Let anyone with ears listen. So this is a story about getting settled enough to understand where it is we're planting our seeds through our thoughts. So the sower of the seeds is you and is me. And how we live our life depends on how we sow. Our thoughts. Our third unity principle is thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. And unity is practical. How will we live today based on how everything has happened up until now? You might be saying, well, you know, Reverend Therese, I've never really thought about my thoughts being seeds. Well, I'm asking you maybe to shift the consciousness today and think of it that way and know that you are a mighty gardener. Look at my plants. This is COVID results of, hey, hi, because I live alone and I am solo distance. I talk to my plants and they are loving it. Seeds grow, we know this, right, once they're planted. And they have various stages of growth, don't they? So everybody breathe with me. The story is about building a strong consciousness of truth. One that we spiritually develop by opening our minds, being receptive, drawing forth our strength from within in faith, trust, and knowing, knowing. Four different kinds of soil that the sower was sowing the seeds in. Now four is a very metaphysical foundational number. And in this story, it represents the four different kinds of soil, the four different kinds of way we hear in the world and the four stages of development morally and spiritually, for each of us. So I know this won't surprise you, but the soil represents our consciousness, right? Of course it does. And each of us has a little bit of a different kind of consciousness, just like outside there's many different kinds of soil. So it's not about us all being alike. It's about us all understanding that we have more in common than we have in differences. So the story goes like this. The, hard, the first soil was hard packed, right, on the pathway, which means no roots could get in. So the, so, the seeds just kind of laid on top of the soil. And then the birds came and ate them and things like that. And what this represents for us, for you and me metaphysically, is the totally unreceptiveness in our mind to truth. Right? We're not aware all the time, are we? Because we're not staying conscious and in this present moment to what it is 
that's being taught us. Everybody is a teacher or a student in each moment. Isn't that exciting? So I'm learning from you. You learn from me. Hey, it's a win-win. So are, is your mind, is your consciousness the soil that's packed? That you hold fast to what might be false into that hard, packed soil? Or are you going to move into the second type of soil that's kind of on rocky ground. We've kind of experienced that this past year, haven't we, in COVID. The kind that the story tells about is that we hear the truth and we're happy about it. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited, yes? And then what happens is kind of like a beginner's luck of manifestations and wow, this true stuff is really great. However, then life happens, doesn't it? Always. And if we haven't taken the seeds in, right? If we haven't taken the application of truth up into our consciousness, then when this shift of life happens, we wobble, don't we? Well, we can wobble. And pressure becomes too much for us sometimes, if you allow it, right? So unity and truth are not always the easiest paths, and yet they work. And I know that because I'm in my 50, 30, excuse me, 35th year of practicing unity principles. That means we move from the mental level to the heart level, and we are taking it in and we're living from it. So that when a struggle comes up, an opportunity, a challenge, right? We don't give up. We say, hmm, maybe that this person who's bugging me has something to show me. Maybe the doctor's diagnosis is just that because God is my prognosis always and in always, right? And whatever little financial things are happening, well, wait a minute, where's my source? With God, of course, of course. And then it's us doing the work to make sure it all happens. And what about that one last person that gets on your nerve, the last nerve that you have, right? Well, forget about it. Say, oh, I'm experiencing a rocky moment. Everybody breathe with me. Because it happens. Rocks happen, don't they? The third type of soil is the soil where there's some thorns in the bushes on the ground. We have those in our life, don't we? So we hear the word and then we use it selfishly for us to get all that we can do. Remember back in the day where the one with the most toys wins? Yeah, that doesn't really work, does it? Because we can only take with us when we move into a greater dimension, that which is in our consciousness, right? So I tell all of my folks at Unity of Hilton Head, who, most of whom are in retirement, hey, spend your money. Spend your money while you're here on you. Yes. So what we know is that having wealth is not a bad thing, and yet it does not get us what it is that we need in consciousness and truth. The seeds of selfishness choke out the seeds of truth and generosity. I always say when I drop stuff off at a thrift store or one of the other non-for-profits, uh, when they ask, hey, do you, would you like a receipt? I say, oh no, I'm trying to outgive God. And they laugh and it gives them something to think about. So as we know, we, as we give, we receive. We give and we receive. And as we do this, then it allows us to move into the fourth type of soil, which is the good ground, so to speak, right? The one that's receptive, who hears the word of truth and allows it to sink in. That 
generates a root system, so to speak, right? So that we can, in fact, say my favorite saying, here I grow again. Here I grow again. Say that with me. Here I grow again. Are you willing? Are you willing to open your mind and your heart and your ears and your eyes to be receptive to the growing that happens in the daily regimen that we have for ourselves of prayer and meditation, right? Because we're planting the seeds that allow us to be mindful of what it is our thoughts are. Everybody breathe with me. Yes. So do you know that you are a possibilitarian? That all is possible. That the very word impossible says I am possible. That's what we are. That's what unity teaches. We are possibilitarians. So we get to seek principle, right? Apply it to our lives and then know our oneness with God, the God of your understanding. Because in unity, we don't tell you what to think. We ask you to think, and then we ask you to question the thoughts that you're thinking. Yes, that's the way it is. That's how we get to move out into the world and, and get over the paths that are hard. And then let go of the paths that are rocky and certainly the ones that have thorns on them, right? So we can get to the place where our minds and our consciousness and the soil of our life, so to speak, is receptive. And we become constructive thinkers. Isn't that what we want for ourselves? It's certainly what I'm promoting in my grandchildren. Well, then Nana gets to be one too. I get to be a constructive thinker. And it's not just about positive thoughts all the time. It's about understanding that I get to go within, right? Where I meet my indwelling spirit and the God of my understanding, where I get to say, not my will, God. Rather, thy will be done in, through, and as me. And that's when I become the best. Oh, I'm going to say gardener of my thoughts. One of my favorite mantras is, I will to will the will of God. Say it with me. I will to will the will of God. And you breathe into it. If it does nothing else, it slows me down. And then I get to say, oh, wait a minute. Am I coming from my indwelling spirit being spirit led or is my ego getting in the way and we know that ego means edging god out and we all have egos when you can feel the physicality of you then there is an ego and our objective is to live beyond it to have the first thought be that of what it is the will of god coming in through and as you. Are you breathing with me? So how do you do this in real life? Well, if we're applying principle, then what happens is as we make a plan, we have an opinion and or a desire, right? Then we know then it comes when we allow it to be spirit-led. Are you grateful? Do you say thank you at least once a day, if not a hundred times a day, at night before you go to bed, doing your gratitude work and your forgiveness work, right? Clearing the slate, having a great sleep, getting up to start all over again. Yes. And we get to do that by cleaning up our emotions, right? Those things that creep in, doubt, fear, could be greed, selfishness. We clean them up. We go, wait a minute, that's not serving the highest and the best of me, let alone those with whom I am interacting, whether it's on a, um, over the ethernet, right? Or in person, 
right? We don't know who we're going to meet when. So how are we going to be nurturing the seeds so they come out and grow in others as well? I think that means we're our master gardeners. Yes, I better go get myself some fancy little gloves if I'm going to be doing all of this tending to the gardens. So when we remember that consciousness is the sum total of all that we think and feel, even all of those things that have happened before us, right, and the lives that we lived that brought us to this moment, then we get to say, ah, I'm thinking constructively. There's a bumper sticker that I love that says, up your consciousness. Well, when you see it on the car in front of you, you're thinking, what? Up your consciousness. It's a very great thought to have. I'm going to up my consciousness. And you get a little bit of attitude. Why not? Because again, then I'm thinking constructively. Thinking constructively. I also get to be totally honest with me. If I'm going to be the best sower of seeds, I have to be honest with me. And my being honest with me allows you to be honest with you and in our dealings with each other. Yes, of course, that's how it happens. Are you willing? Are you ready to know that the seeds that come through your thoughts that are planted in your world around you all depend on you? On you being spirit-led? Right? We just came out of the Lenten season that allowed us to fast from those things that don't serve us and feast on everything that does to release those things that no longer serve us and to renew ourselves with all of those gifts that do serve us, right? So much in unity to serve us. I'm wondering if you're willing to turn off your TV, to read maybe a little bit of something that's more positive on how it is you get to be in the world with each other. How many uh, classes might you be attending or not? And how many books and what kind are they? Right. What I love in, in taking the Bible and applying it to my life, because it's just a roadmap, and we metaphysically interpret it to help me understand how Therese gets to be the best Therese today. And that's what you get to do with it as well. The Apostle Paul, who didn't know Jesus, says this, Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. True, honest, just, Pure, lovely, isn't that a great word? Good report, virtue, and praise. Growing consciousness takes concentration. It takes a commitment from you to say, yes, I do want to have a better garden growing in my mind and around me in my world. And so as we remember the types of soil, okay, because it helps us with life, we get to study truth, whatever that looks like for you, and then we live on the mental level, making our spirit-led demonstrations so that we don't let our seeds drop on the hardened ground or on the rocky ground or on the thorn-filled ground. Rather, we listen and become constructive thinkers so that we can embrace the will of God that is ours 
cleaning up our emotions, right? No longer feasting on those things that no longer serves us, right? And then choosing to feast on and focus on love and joy and peace and being totally honest with ourselves because we are on the good ground that allows the deep roots to take hold. Charles Fillmore, our Unity co-founder, said at the age of 94, I'm only 62 and three quarters, so I, I'm looking to continue to grow into this. I fairly sizzle with zeal and enthusiasm, he said, to spring forth. How appropriate. It's springtime, y'all. We get to spring forth, he said, with a mighty faith to do the things that ought to be done by me. So let me say it again. I fairly sizzle with zeal and enthusiasm and spring forth with a mighty faith to do the things that ought to be done by me. 94. So each of us is a unique, unrepeatable expression of God. We know this to be true, yes? And we get to express this loveliness in the world by living life and remembering that we are the sowers of our lives. And so it is, and so we let it be. Amen. We take a moment now together to be in meditation and quiet. I'm going to put on some music. Close your outer eyes as you're comfortable. Move from your head to your heart. The longest journey we take often. We concentrate in on our breathing because the breath is where we meet the God of our own understanding. Deep within, that still small voice is what we're able to hear. Breathe in love and exhale peace and let it surround you. Let it enfold you. And the music has told us today that we are unwritten. Yes, a clean slate. Just like the seeds being planted in which soil you get to choose. Undefined yet until you think your thoughts, yes? Just at the beginning. Together as we breathe into this time, we release our inhibitions. And we allow our hands to reach for that which is always available to us. No one else does it for us. It is always and in all ways an inside job. Open your arms wide. Let your heart expand. Today is the day. You're invited to color outside the lines. It's just the beginning. Breathe into that possibility. Just the beginning. And take a moment with me in the silence. Knowing that we are possibilitarians right here, right now. 
always and in always, in the silence. As we make the choice to become a constructive thinker, each of us embracing the will of the God of our understanding, cleaning up our emotions, fasting from all that no longer serves us and feasting on joy, love, and peace. Allowing for ourselves to be honest with ourselves. We become the master gardeners of our lives. Upping our consciousness to that of the Christ consciousness that was risen in all of us ceremoniously at least last week. And we celebrate spring in the time of Going forth, as Phil Moore said, with a mighty faith to do the things that are ours to do. As we bring our attention back to this time and this place, we say thank you. Thank you for this opportunity and this precious and holy ground we call Unity of Chattanooga. And so it is, and so we let it be. We pray this in the name and after the nature, and under the authority of the living, loving presence, that is you, and that is me. And so it is. Amen. Many blessings. Great to see you. Be well. Up your consciousness. Bye. Thank you, Reverend Teresa Lee, for your message. Thank you for the joy that you spread all over, and, and we appreciate you. Now, this is a time in our service where we get to practice our gratitude. For those of you who continue to support us with your financial gifts, we say thank you, not only for your commitment to our ministry, but because it makes a difference in getting the unity message out. Years ago, I was financially challenged. I had very little. I decided that my only hope was to try giving 10%. I'd heard that people actually began to prosper when they did that. So I started donating to people and places that fed me spiritually. And some little things started to happen. A friend would invite me to dinner. Someone would stop by the house and take me to a 12-step program. There'd be a little weekend job that would come up. And little by little, I began to have some money. But I noticed there were some other things that started to come my way, like the dinner. And that counts, too. So little bit by little, I began to give this 10%. And little by little, I started to prosper. We start where we're at. It's not how much we give. It's that we give. And that's what counts. Because once we start, 
we see these little things happening and then they become more things and bigger things. And there's, there's a connection with the universe, with this giving that we do. So give yourself the opportunity to be that giver, to step into that circle of receiving. You're worth it. I was worth it, and I'm worth it today. And I am prospered and blessed. And so will you be. And now, let's join together in our love offering song. Announcements. Sunday morning meditation at 9.30. Mindful musing Thursday at noon. Both are on Zoom and Penny can send you the Zoom information so let her know. A great way to serve the AV department needs a volunteer and uh, if you are experienced with social media, the Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, uh, please let Shannon know. If you're not, he is a fabulous teacher and you will learn quickly from him. Uh, so if you have that answer, it's a great way to serve. And speaking of serving, uh, Barb and Jim Murphy uh, are doing the food drive and um, Think about the little ones. We've got five families. they got some small children. So think about the little ones, too, as you're thinking about food to pass on to Jim and Barbara. So thank you for doing that. Thank you for serving the community, also and the, the families there that need help. We have a Zoom class coming up um, April 13th at 7.30 on Tuesday evening. It's your spiritual development, spiritual enlightenment uh, is a wonderful thing. We continually grow. It's not like we take one class and that's it. There are other areas that open up and we start to grow and start to have that light that comes out of us and around us. And people notice it. They really notice it. So um, 
join this class. It's Meta Mania Workshop. It's about awakening of our awareness and understanding of spiritual truth and exploring metaphysical concepts. Check out our website and there's a way to sign up through the website. Next week, Pastor Jim Scott is going to be with us as guest speaker and musician, so join us for that. I want to thank Reverend Teresa Lee again for being with us. We enjoyed you. And I want to thank Unity of the Oaks for their music and for that uh, song that they uh, sang just for us. Uh, so thank you. And they're going to end with the peace song. So enjoy this week. Enjoy the spring. Enjoy the sun that's coming out. And even the, the rain that's letting the flowers bloom and the different shades of green on the trees are just starting to bud out. It's so wonderful. And the squirrels are running around and the birds to hear them chirp. Oh my gosh, and the butterflies are out and the little bees. Just so wonderful. It's a, just the awesome thing that you see God in nature. So enjoy. Get out and enjoy it this week. Bless you. Have a great week. And now, our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. I am light. The love of God enfolds us. I am love. The power of God protects us. I am power. The presence of God watches over us. I am presence. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Thank you for joining us. Get out in nature and enjoy God's work. Joy.